Uh, given that Sony and Microsoft's move to x86 architecture in the H generation has borne so many advantages in terms of ease of development and forwards, uh, backwards compatibility, why wasn't x86 adopted by earlier console generations? And do you foresee a future where the console makers move away from x86 again in favor of more bespoke or alternative architectures? Gotta say, this episode, if you're doing the DF bespoke drinking game, you're probably paralytic by now. Um, well, I, I think I can answer this one um, simply because um, there probably weren't cost efficient versions of x86 processors available in prior generations. And what was available from the eighth generation onwards was, you know, basically AMD had mastered the art of creating the APU, which is a single block of silicon that could, that could contain um, area efficient relatively performant um, CPU cores, um, which were dwarfed by much larger GPUs uh, on the die there. And I don't think that was possible in prior generations. I'm not sure that there were. I mean, if you consider what Jaguar was, it was an area efficient x86 core designed primarily for the mobile market. So prior, yeah, before that, there wasn't really a mobile market to consider. So I think that's why they've done it. Um, Oliver. Anything to add to that? Or indeed, do you foresee a future where the console makers move away from x86 again in favor of more bespoke alternative architectures? I think there might have also been a bit of a performance and area advantage to risk, especially back then. Right. Um, yeah, you're probably right. Because risk was risk ISAs were pretty simple um, back then, especially nowadays that's less so. So I think that the performance advantage probably back then would be a little bit more pronounced potentially when you're looking at like a, a MIPS CPU or something like that or a power PC. And I think it's, I think it's possible they might move back to risk with like arm stuff. That's always a possibility or like risk five, maybe down the line when that's a bit more mature. I think it probably depends more on cost and power than any specific advantage of ARM or x86, I think probably. I think there's also some question about what is the performance level of the cores that you're using, the specific cores that you're using. Right now, Qualcomm's Orion cores are kind of within striking distance of the AMD cores, but if you're looking for, let's say, the most single core performance potentially possible in, a, in an next generation console, maybe you would prefer to go with the Zen design, which probably maybe can clock higher, has higher APC possibly. Uh, there are some factors there that might lead you down that that road. I think it's totally possible. I think it's just a question of what do the implementations look like cost and power wise? What makes sense for the console manufacturers? But I think they're kind of both in the same ballpark of performance where they can be considered. Whereas like if you go back four years, there was not really an ARM CPU design, ARM CPU core design that was going to be competitive with Zen 2. I think that's changed a lot now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, the other thing in terms of ease of development, I mean, Switch has been using ARM cores for a long time now, and I don't really hear too many complaints from developers about you know ease of development. It's more the limited horsepower that's available there. <laughs> So I think ARM compilers are probably pretty pretty good these days as well. So I'm not sure that's you know that's going to be too much of an issue.